Welcome to the Blast Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson. This podcast is help is here to help you experience being blessed that transcends a mere hashtag. Now, let me add my disclaimer like I always do. I'm not a preacher, prophet, or Bible scholar, but I am a God loving, <coughs> Jesus loving, Bible believing, New Thought Christian who believes that God blesses us according to our faith and how we work His principles. So. If you're ready to be encouraged, enlightened, and entertained, then you're in the right place. I'm broadcasting on WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network, a nonprofit charitable radio broadcast with the mission to empower, encourage, and educate. If you are enjoying the Blessed Podcast, the Blessed Podcast, please, 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 please donate at www dot wytv7.org. Today's podcast is sponsored by Tosin's Publishing. We have a new book and it is Ren's Affirmation. God is good and so am I. Get this for your children and guess what? We also have t-shirts for young and old. God is good and so am I t-shirts. You know, we're always saying God is good all the time, but now it's time for us to teach one another and our children that God is good and so are we. Okay, so we are wrapping up April and it's our month of talking money. Now, I would be remiss if I did not talk about insurance when we're talking about money. You cannot build wealth. Hear me. You cannot build wealth without protection. And insurance is how you protect your wealth. And I have with me my friend, Helen Blocker Adams. Helen is, uh, is, is amazing. I'm going to let her tell you all about it. She is doing some wonderful things in insurance. She is helping families, and she is making money. So we are so talking about <laughs> making money this month. All right. So we're going to talk about insurance, but we're going to also talk about ways that we can build more wealth for ourselves and right. bring in more money. So, Helen, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Raquel, I want to thank you so much for inviting me. And this is a, a unique experience for me. And uh, I'm, I'm just blessed. And I'm uh, uh, not only blessed, but blessed to be able to see you this afternoon <laughs> all the way from Augusta, Georgia. <laughs> yes, yes. It, I love how we can connect with one another all the way across the state. Yes, the yes. You know? Even in the midst, even in the midst of all of this that we're going through yes. right now. Yes, and we're still yes. able to connect and 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 serve the people because that's what we're here to do: serve the people and help them to get blessed. That transcends a mere hashtag. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and the the beauty of final expense is that it's a recession-proof industry and. Death and dying, unfortunately, is on a lot of people's mind right now because yes, of the coronavirus. Yes. Um, but it's a subject a lot of people don't really like to talk about too much, but it's something that we have to talk about. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to address this issue. And I'm glad that you're um, excited about uh, talking about this particular issue and tying it in to wealth and finance yes. and money. Yes. So let's just get right into it. Um, life insurance. Um, before we get into final expense, let's just talk about life insurance in general. I mean, with one life insurance policy, a family can be set on a different tra trajectory. You know what I mean? Because like my, when my mother passed away, she left me a nice amount of money. And at that particular time, I didn't have a job. And I was still raising my son. But with that money, I was able to secure us, you know, housing. And I was able to go back to school to better myself, to, you know, to further my education. So it was like she really helped set me on a different path. And that's why I would I try to explain to people why life insurance is kind of it's important. Right. It really is. And and let me just say. Uh, a little bit about me, um, if you don't mind, before and how I even got in this industry. 
um, because my background, you know, once again, my name is Helen Blocker Adams. I'm based in Augusta, Georgia, and I am uh, a final expense specialist in the company that I represent, the Senior Life Insurance Company and Consolidated Planning. And I got introduced to this industry a little over five years ago, and it, it changed my life. But here's, here's I want people to um, realize that, you know, my, my background was in broadcasting, uh, a small business person. Um, I've written and published several books. I uh, used to host a, a talk radio show here in Augusta, Georgia used to host a, a television show here in Augusta. So my background is in the marketing, PR, broadcasting. And so to be able to use all of that experience um, now in serving people in the final expense industry is really um, has been a blessing. But when it comes to being able to think further ahead, like your grandmother, when you said that was your grandmother, oh, my mother, my mother, your mother. Okay. So now your mother was, she was not only a jewel and of course I didn't know her, but I say that because too often people do not plan ahead today for tomorrow. And that's what your mother did. And if you think about final expense and in life insurance, it's like having a savings account, okay? Because I run into cross to people with people today that will say, oh, well, you know, if it's going to cost me this much a month, then I can go ahead and save that and then use it to bury me or whatever, whatever. But then my question, and then if I have someone that's 65 or 70 years old telling me this, mm -hmm. then my question would be, well, do you have that amount of money saved now? And if their response is no, then why do they think that their behavior is going to change now at 70 when you haven't saved 10,000 or 15 or 20,000 over the years that you've been living? Exactly. So if you have a uh, final expense or a life insurance policy, every time you're putting money, every time that bank is paying that premium, that's like having a savings account. So one day, if it's a $50,000 policy, if it's a $100,000 policy, when that person dies, the beneficiary is going to get that chunk of money. Yeah. So the idea, if a person will look at it like it's a savings account and a whole life policy builds cash value, then they may be more uh, apt to get a policy versus thinking I can just create a savings account for this because here's what happened with the savings account Raquel you know where I'm going with this <laughs> well something's going to happen they're going to get two or three flat tires yeah the the refrigerator is going to break down the you know the, the they're going to oh, have an accident <laughs> that exactly you know they're going to have medical bills that were unexpected so they're going to think, oh, wow, I don't have the money. Oh, yes, I do. I've got this savings account that I've been save, saving for when I die, mm -hmm. but I need it while I'm living. Wipes out that savings account. Now they're stuck. No life insurance, no money in the savings account. And, oh, heaven forbid that they die. Oh, and now the family has to pay for the funeral pay for all the other expenses exactly and, and because they use the money for something else. and you know what else Helen the thing that people gotta realize too that money that is given to your family is tax free it is tax free the government free. can't touch it that's right that's but right the money that you have <laughs> in your bank account okay. that's not tax free it sure is it so, sure, that's exactly right so that's and another reason Mm -hmm. That's exactly you, you, you right. Your family tax free money with an insurance policy. Tax free money, and that could be thirty thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand, or a million dollars, depending right. on the type of policy. You're exactly, exactly right. Exactly, and you know what? It's just so I I find myself being kind of baffled when people say that they don't believe in life insurance, or you know. Oh, I, I don't want to think about that right now. I'm too young. And I'm like, uh, yeah. young people die every day. It's every just, day. It's not just for the elderly. That's I, mean, right. I don't understand that you should have a, a policy 
especially a final expense policy for right. everybody. And so let's just get into the final expense. What's the difference between, say, a, a life insurance and a final expense? Because I believe that you should have both. So tell, tell us the difference. And one thing about life insurance, Raquel, there are lots of different types of life insurance policies. Mm -hmm. There's whole life. There's different categories like universal life. There's term policies. There's, and then there's final expense. Now, one of the things that differentiates final expense from life insurance is that most final expense policies, the highest amount may be 30, 40, or $50,000, mm -hmm. okay? So it's not designed, a final expense policy is not designed to leave a significant chunk of money like the policy your mother left right. for you when you were able to get a house and start back to school, et cetera. Right. But a final expense policy, it helps to have money for when that person passes away. Right. So that way, the casket, the vault, the headstone, and everything that's tied in with a funeral is taken care of. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned you recommend both. And so do I, because a final expense policy can be ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, for example. Okay. That life insurance policy could be a $100,000 policy. So when we talk with families, we let them know that $100,000, use that money to leave, will it to your grandchildren, your children, family members, so that they can take care of necessary needs after the person has passed away. But oh, by the way, this final expense policy, this specifically is to be used to bury me. If there's some money left over, then so be it. But it's not going to be a big chunk of money like a $100,000 policy. And that's why having them both, if the family's pocketbook can bear, having them both is necessary. Right. And <laughs> I'm sorry. Think about final expense also when, when you consider a lot of people have had insurance over the years. They get up in age, they've let policies lapse, they've gotten sick, mm -hmm. insurance company, other insurance companies have canceled them because they got cancer or they are in and out of the hospital and all of a sudden they're without life insurance. That's where the final expense product can come into play because the final expense fills a void that the other big boy um, uh, companies, so to speak, are not able to do. I had a client, just to give you an example, I guess about a year ago, who had a policy with one of the big, large, large companies that's been around like 100 years. Mm -hmm. And she got a letter because she had, con she had gotten cancer. Oh, okay. Um, terminating. I mean, effective immediately, you no longer, she had been paying on that policy for years. Oh, so wow. when she contacted me, she was frantic. Now I was able to write her a, a policy with the company that I represent, but shame on an insurance company for uh, uh, penalizing you because you got sick. And that's <laughs> right. where final expense right. can fill that void that another life insurance company has um, chosen not to fill, and that's where final expense it can be um, um, a, a life preserver, if you will. Right, and 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 because final expense is basically you're buying it for your death, so they're not going to say, "Oh, you have something that's going to make you die. We don't want to give you an insurance policy." Uh, that's why I need the insurance policy that's because right. I'm going to die one day. That's right. And we don't know if I'm going to die in three three months or if I'm going to die in thirty years, but we know that's I'm right. going to die. So how are you canceling my insurance house because now I got a, a you know, a disease that could lead to my death. I, right. That is so horrible. And that's why I also like final expenses um, insurance. Yeah. So another uh, group of people who 
usually can't get insured by the big boys, people in prison. But when they die, the family still has to pay for their funeral. That's exactly right. People who are incarcerated, um, people who have HIV AIDS, mm -hmm. um, people who are in nursing facilities or on hospice, mm -hmm. those are individuals that most life insurance companies will see at a high risk, yes. which means they don't want to take the gamble because they might die and they may have to pay off uh -huh. uh, uh, the, the benefits. Whereas the company that I represent, we have a specific program for families that have someone that have sicknesses and illnesses like that and people who are incarcerated. Because you're right, in being an incarcerated person is a high risk. There's no doubt about that. But guess what? Either at some point in time, they're going to get out. And that is our hope. Okay. And, or if they're still in there, they're either going to die in there if they're like on death row or something, or if they get in a fight and get killed, somebody's still got to pay for the funeral, right. you know? So they, they still got to go home to mama, you yeah. know, and mama may not have the money. So, so that's where the insurance um, can come into play for someone who's incarcerated. And, you know, I have served people that um, had, had children that had gotten in trouble and the sigh of relief that, I mean, they're already concerned that they're behind bars, you know? Why have that extra burden of, oh my gosh, what if something happened to my baby and I don't have the money to be able to pay? So it gives them that peace of mind and that's a beautiful thing. Right. You know, another, I was thinking, and we didn't talk about this, another reason why you might want to have the final expense um, policy in addition to say that $100,000 policy because please, please, please do not take a $100,000 policy into a funeral home. Because you finna get the, you finna get a, a funeral service for hope. <laughs> <laughs> and if, you, if they know you got that much money, they finna jack up all kind of prices and give you the very best of the very best. And you're not in the right frame of mind to say no. You don't need that because you think that my exactly. loved one is worth all of this. So you're going to want to give them to <clears throat> all your money so you can have this beautiful send off. And then you're going to be crying when the funeral is over because you didn't use up most of that $100,000 policy. Exactly. Oh, oh and, and it's because the citizens are so uninformed and underinformed. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go in and sit down and talk with a client, we like to educate them. And most people in the target group that I serve, 50 to 85, they've been to a few funerals, yeah. okay? They, they know about how much they cost. Mm -hmm. They have an idea about how much that casket costs. And they've had the experience of the emotion that's tied in with having to go to the funeral home and pick the casket and talk with the funeral director. And so the funeral director, a lot of times they're appealing to that emotion. And there's a whole lot of emotion going on if mama or daddy or sister or brother is the one that passed away. Right. And so it's unfortunate that, you know, they're, they're kind of taken advantage of on, on the worst day of their lives. But that's the fact of the matter is they, they really are. And, and, and once we educate people and let them know, hey, look, no, you don't have to spend that much for a casket. And a lot of people don't realize you can go to walmart.com and, and order a, cas a casket. Really? Yeah. Yeah, sure I didn't can. know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. And see, but see, the thing about it, most people, because they're not planning in advance, when their minds are clear, yes. when they're not under all that stress, so they don't know. But when you're in the middle of someone that's lost their life and they've got to make all these decisions quick, we're not thinking straight. No. And as a result, they end up spending much more money than, than they anticipated unless someone is there to give them uh, a little bit of idea of how this really works. Right. So, Helen, I mean, the time is going by so fast. We only wow, have we sure 10 have. minutes. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. In these last 10 minutes, I need for you to talk about just your business, final expenses, and how well you have actually done, because you are 
big time. You are doing a great job. You're doing big things. So please talk about the business. You know, uh, Raquel, it, it, it's, you know, it's amazing how much that my business has grown even since I met you and that was almost a year ago okay because I came to LA Santa Monica to visit my brother to celebrate my 60th birthday yeah. and that's when I met you yeah. in person okay and so we're looking at almost a year ago so let me tell you the growth of Team Adams the Adams group from last year this time has been just phenomenal. I mean, our team, we have over 135 agents on our team in like 13 or 14 states, okay? I am now a national sales director. When I first met you, I was uh, 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 an agent. Congratulations. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I think I was a regional director. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so what happened in the, in the month of March, we as the Adams Group, um, we exceeded $100,000 in annual premium ad in a year. I mean, in a month. Okay. We did this in a month. Now, the, significant of, uh, the significance of that is I was the third female under our flagship company, Senior Life Insurance Company, to have achieved that. Now, I didn't know about that until after we, you know, achieved it. But so national sales director simply means you're, you know, you've got, a, you've got another title, but now you're at a, in a position where there's lots of growth, a lot of new people coming in, doing a lot more training and mentoring and coaching, and we're, um, which means we're able to, say, to serve hundreds of more people all over the United States because I can only do but so many presentations myself. Right. But if I can teach a Ray Kell and someone else and someone else and they teach someone else, now we've got people all over the United States that's serving families, providing peace of mind. Right. And God has, when we talk about blessed, okay, God has blessed my business. Um, when I looked at my, uh, my 1099 from 2018 to 2019, it was like a 264 increase, 264% increase in my wow. income. And I've been doing final expense a year this past January. Okay. So you're looking at what 15 months that I've been full time. This is all I do is, is, is provide legacy and love, peace of mind to families all. And I'm, I'm licensed in five States and including um, Texas. And I'm looking at possibly getting a license in California so I can come back and spend some time in California. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So look, um, because I am, I'm, I'm actually in your group. I haven't really gotten started yet, and you know. <laughs> but you, but you I know, me in the product, and absolutely I in the message because people need the hope. People need help in the, on the worst day of yes. their lives. That's the yes. worst day of their lives to bury a loved one. That's right. And, you know. So, and I do. I definitely. Agree I love what we do with final expense insurance. But yes. one of the things that if people want to get involved, if people want to, you know, be a beacon of hope to the people around them and they want to get involved with final expense, what should they do? Well, the first thing they can do is either contact me or contact you so that we can guide them on what they would need to do if if they weren't licensed we can show them how they can take a pre-licensing course and go through the process of getting licensed and see a lot of people don't realize um, even in the midst of the coronavirus we are essential employees okay so we matter people need us so we're not necessarily sitting at home not serving the people we have the right if you will to go and see people when a person gets licensed or become a final expense specialist, they get licensed, which, which means that they had to take a test and get certified, get vetted, and all of that, which means they are able to write business in any state that they got their license in. So they can contact me. They can contact your station. I don't know if you wanted me to give a number or whatever. Yeah, yeah we can give them a way to get in touch with you. If you have a website oh. and number, give it, give it to them. Okay, I would, I would give a, um, how about if I give my email address? Yes, do that. I think that would be the easiest. Yes. H as in Helen, B as in boy, 
A as an Apple, 1959 at gmail.com. That's okay. HBA1959 at, e, at gmail.com. And if they didn't get that, certainly they can reach out to you and then you can forward it to me and we can we can make this thing happen. And let me just say, even though you said, hey, you're, yes, you are a part of my team and you haven't been that active, but the fact that you still have a passion for this and you understand the importance of it, that's, that's half the battle right there, you know, because a lot of times people don't realize you can do multiple things. You can write books, you can host a talk show, and you can write you can be a final expense specialist. So it's just a matter of integrating all of that, whatever people are going, whatever they got going on in their lives, they can integrate this in their life and we can show them how to do that. Yes, I am so excited that you um, came (laughs) along with me today because I know that the people need to be talking about final expenses, um, especially with this COVID-19 thing going on. Yes. A lot of people. And oh it's my not done. And then they said it may come back in the winter, just like that's the winter, right. It may come back. So we need to be having these conversations that's about right. final expenses, about life insurance, about protecting our family, of, you know, just setting up our our future. And our unfortunately, but it could be fortunately. Yeah, that's exactly you know what right. Believe in, that's exactly right. We are our time on this earth is gonna be over and we that's gonna right. transition into something new. And so I don't necessarily look at that as a bad thing. That's right. <laughs> but it is a thing that we have to discuss and we have to prepare for because it's coming. Yes, yes, it's, yes. It's all, right. So we don't want it to catch us off guard. And that's why final expenses is something that everybody should be talking about. After they listen to this this podcast, they need to be contacting you or they yes. need to be contacting me. And Absolutely. I'm only licensed in um, Missouri and California, but we have people all over. That's we right. Make sure that we get them a final, um, a final expense policy. And if they want to join the Adams group. And That's right. And start selling final uh, expense insurance. Absolutely. Here for Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. Let me say one more quick thing is um, with the COVID virus going on right now, many insurance companies are declining new applications from people 65 and older. Oh, wow. So that's that's a concern. So, you know, they're trying to protect themselves. So keep that in mind, too, in terms of a sense of urgency for people who are oh, wow. 60, 65 and above. Mm-hmm. That is something good to know. So yes, a lot of insurance companies are not even insuring people over 65 absolutely COVID. so you probably want to give us a contact absolutely we can help you know because we can take care of them yeah we sure can Raquel I know we only have a couple of seconds I want to thank you so much for inviting me to join your podcast and this was great I enjoyed it thank you so much for being on and I just like because I just want to be a blessing to people Yes. And it's like we're blessed regardless of our situation because we have a mindset to be blessed. And I think you really embody that because, I mean, in 15 months, you're number, th- I mean, the third woman to do what you've done. Yeah. You are really showing us that if we work the principles, yes. we can have what we say we want. Absolutely. Working the principles, it really is. And I appreciate you and I applaud you for working Thank the you. principles. All right. So, everybody, we will see you next week. We're going to be in a new month. We're going to be in the month of May, and it's going to be all about mothers. So it's going to be awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Remember what God has done for Helen. He can do for us. We just have to believe, and we have to know that we're blessed. Until next week. Thank you. Bye-bye now.